Hello, my name is Pete Hardy. I'm Product Management Director responsible for the Jasper Gold uh, product line at Cadence. And uh, welcome to the session on handoff uh, better quality RTL designs. So the agenda we'll cover in the next 15 minutes, uh, we'll look at the big picture for RTL design handoff. We'll look at how um, the uh, lint checks can be augmented with automatic formal checks. And we'll also look at how structural analysis on the CDC and RDC side can be augmented with functional CDC and metastability injection. Um, then we'll look quickly at a uh, formal technique that can be very easily adopted by designers, sequential equivalence checking. And we'll conclude by um, some takeaways and looking at uh, some customer success examples. Okay, so the big picture. Um, typical RTL handoff includes uh, signing off the RTL against a comprehensive list of structural checks. Uh, these will cover lint, uh, design for test checks, um, clock domain crossing, and reset domain crossing checks. Um, all these checks tend to be automatic. Uh, the user may need to provide some uh, constraints as well as, of course, the RTL, the constraints for DFT checks and CDC and RDC primarily. Um, for a more comprehensive sign-off, uh, we recommend to augment those structural checks with automatic functional checks. And that would be high value code reachability and various functional checks on the, uh, on the lint side and on the CDC RDC checks, uh, a range of functional checks that I'll go into later. And Jasper Gold RTL designer apps, which are Superlint and CDC, are uniquely uh, positioned to provide an integrated solution for both these structural checks and the automatic formal checks. So why automatic formal for designers? Well, the first point is really that automation, of course, makes, uh, makes things simpler and a lot easier for designers to pick up. Designers are not necessarily used to writing properties uh, or system Verilog assertions. So those properties can be extracted automatically from the RTL. Most checks can be run without constraints. Uh, some checks do require constraints, uh, some, uh, uh, which is a kind of formal property to be written uh, to reduce noise. Um, the second and probably most important reason is that formal is both exhaustive and also no test bench is required. So if we look at uh, uh, testing a design with simulation, um, it takes some time to create a good simulation test bench. So that means that the first real bug, uh, it may take some time to find that. And it's also notoriously difficult to write simulation test benches that uh, check for all the corner cases. So finding the first corner case bug could take even longer. Compare that with formal, and because it, there's no test bench needed, you can get it up and running very, very quickly and be finding those, uh, those real bugs very, very early. And because formal is exhaustive, it's actually a lot better at covering, uh, at uh, finding the corner case bugs. So you can find those a lot earlier as well. Okay, so the autoformal uh, check categories that are of interest, uh, there's dead code, which is basically a code reachability check. Uh, there's X assignment, there's FSM checks, and those are about state reachability, but also live lock and deadlock checks. I'll go into an example of an FSM deadlock check uh, in a minute. Um, there's checks for um, signals, uh, stuck at and uh, deadlock, there's case checks, there's out of bound indexing checks, there's arithmetic overflow, and there's bus contention checks as well here. And we have an example of that here. Uh, it's very important, of course, that um, uh, two um, ports or two inputs A and B are not driving the bus at the same time, and uh, they have to be mutually exclusive, and uh, the check produces a violation if that's not the case. Okay, so uh, the order formal check for um, FSM reachability and deadlock. Um, so clearly, the uh, we're looking at the um, a bubble diagram on the right, and we've also highlighted the state uh, checksum on the left. Um, so uh, ch checksum, obviously, the state can be reached; it can be entered. Uh, but if that uh, particular signal uh, never asserts, then uh, we're deadlocked in the checksum state. We never uh, we're never able to um, uh, to leave it. 
And uh, that's an example of a check where structural lint will never catch that. It needs a formal check. These are high value checks, uh, very high value to be caught at the early RTL stage where uh, the designer can actually do something about this and uh, uh, you know, change the FSM or change whatever's driving that signal that is causing the deadlock. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, how we augment the structural checks on the uh, CDC side. Okay, so typical um, CDC flows will uh, take you through configuration, and config configuration really means setting up the clock specifications, the reset specifications, and any configurations necessary on the signal. And then the structural analysis will look at all the crossings of interest. So uh, where I'm crossing clock domains, where I'm crossing reset domains, and really check that those crossings are protected with a suitable synchronizer. Um, on a reasonable size design, that can create um, actually thousands of violations. And um, uh, various companies, in our experience, various design teams do better or worse jobs of really going through those violations in detail and actually um, looking at what could be waived and what shouldn't be waived. Um, so step in the functional analysis, and that gives many, many benefits here. First, to check that the signal configuration, the clock uh, configuration, the reset configuration uh, was indeed all set up correctly. And also to check uh, that any conditional waivers, to check the waiver condition is valid. Um, that can uh, avoid a lot of uh, false waivers, which... Uh, uh, you know, can cause problems down the line. In addition to that, uh, rather than just check for the presence of a suitable synchronizer, a lot of uh, synchronizers use some kind of protocol. For example, a FIFO synchronizer uses um, gray coded pointers internally. Uh, so there are functional checks that also check that the uh, protocol is being adhered to. In addition to that, uh, there's metastability analysis. And that's injecting metastability or glitches um, either in a formal uh, verification environment or in a simulation environment. And I'll go a little bit more into that on the next slide. So metastability injection, um, formal on the left here, the prerequisite is to have a, if you like, a full uh, formal property verification environment that is passing the functional uh, assertions. And then the CDC app works out where uh, to to inject metastability, which is basically injecting glitches. And we're verifying whether or not those properties uh, still pass in the presence of metastability. Um, similar thing on the simulation side, this is a very tight integration we have between Jasper Gold and the Excelium simulator. And uh, the prerequisite is a uh, passing uh, simulation environment. And then we can inject um, uh, 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 metastability from the Jasper Gold CDC app in many different ways. We can mimic both setup and hold uh, violations. It's not dependent on the synchronizer types. And we can uh, configure the setup and hold time windows um, such that you get the, uh, you're able to explore the sensitivity to glitches uh, of, the, uh, of the design. And uh, if you see, um, the design fail in the uh, uh, as a result of these glitches, then you uh, put a better synchronizer on that uh, on that crossing, for example. Okay, so that is uh, really uh, that concludes the uh, Superlint and CDC part of this. Now let's have a look at uh, what's a very um, easy formal app uh, to be picked up by designers: sequential equivalence checking. So first, let's understand what sequential uh, equivalence checking is uh, versus what might be more familiar logical equivalence checking. So logical equivalence checking, also known as combinational equivalence checking, um, you're looking at the same functional behavior between a spec version of the design and an implementation version of, this, uh, of the design. And that has to the, uh, match the functional behavior at external ports, but also at all the internal state elements. So we're looking at state matching designs only here. Uh, whereas sequential equivalence checking 
Uh, we're looking for the same functional behavior at external ports, but that can apply to state matching or non-state matching designs. Um, it ignores the internal sequential uh, differences. And we'll see um, why that's important when we look at some examples of, uh, of using sequential equivalence checking. The, by far the most popular that uh, we see in our customer base is clock gating in, insertion. And this is a, uh, a, a technique to save dynamic power consumption, but it changed the, changes the cycle schedule of the design, which is why you need sequential equivalence checking to check it, not logical equivalence checking. Same thing with pipeline retiming. If I'm uh, introducing um, pipeline resources in my, uh, in, in my data path, to improve performance, then I'm, I'm changing the uh, cycle schedule. And um, that's something that needs uh, SEC to, um, uh, to verify. Uh, the same thing can be true for various aspects of code cleanup, uh, feature addition, removal, um, ECOs, et cetera. An interesting one is parameterization. We're talking about uh, configur uh, configurable IP here. So the check that I'm really looking for is um, uh, is to check the uh, pieces of the design that should not be affected by the uh, configurable parameter and check that I'm still seeing the, uh, um, the same behavior uh, in the spec and the implementation uh, design when I'm changing these, uh, these various parameters that shouldn't affect that part of the design. Um, another example that we see uh, designers always wanting to do is reset optimization. So uh, resettable flops come at a cost, and uh, I maybe want to use the minimum uh, resettable flops I can get away with. But if I uh, overdo that, then all of a sudden I've changed the functionality. So of course, uh, you know the the reset optimization, the pipeline retiming, and the clock gating assertion are all playing with. Uh, PPA, the, their optimizations the designer is looking to make for power, performance, and area. And uh, SEC is a very, very convenient way um, to uh, uh, check those optimizations before the, uh, uh, the design leaves the designer's hands. Okay, so a little bit more on clock gating. Obviously, this is a popular technique. Um, uh, to reduce dynamic power uh, dissipation. And what we're trying to do is prune the clock tree, um, turning off more and more of the registers when they're, when they're not um, active uh, to reduce the, the toggles. Uh, you get a, a, some leaf level clock gating for free in modern synthesis tools, but what we're talking about is changes to the RTL here. And if I overdo the changes to the RTL, I could well be changing the functionality of the design, which of course is not what uh, I want to do as an RTL designer. Um, so how, how is this done with the SEC app? So we set up what's called a MITRE, okay? We're comparing the specification against the implementation. And uh, the specification in this case, uh, the clock gating is disabled. Uh, the implementation has the clock gating enabled, and we're checking um, for equivalent functionality. Um, we're getting much, much better, and we uh, maintain a, um, uh, a set of test cases in-house that we're checking the, uh, the SEC app against for convergence and scalability on being able to do this on bigger and bigger designs. Um, so, uh, you know, for some pretty large designs, we can converge fully. So it will give you a yes or no answer about whether or not the optimizations you made were good. And in uh, many cases, we can get very, very close to that. And when it doesn't quite converge, if there's a few properties not converging, we'll see a, uh, a later what, um, what one customer did about that. Okay, so reaching the conclusion section. Um, the takeaways for superlint. So um, RTL handoff uh, using structural lint alone is not comprehensive. For comprehensive sign-off, we advise that that's augmented with automatic formal checks. So Jasper Gold superlint is the industry leading solution for RTL sign-off by designers with comprehensive structural lint and DFT checks augmented with these high value auto formal checks that, uh, uh, that I've explained in this presentation. 
Uh, it's easy setup and a rich, a rich uh, uh, feature analysis and debug environment and designed to be low noise and high productivity. Um, ST presented on this a couple of years ago at Jasper User Group and also uh, Global Foundries presented at uh, a recent uh, uh, CDN Live. Um, similar thing on the CDC and RDC side, structural analysis is not comprehensive enough and uh, to go beyond structural analysis, uh, you need um, functional checks, but also you need to be able to link CDC and RDC analysis to, with your verification environment for true CDC and RDC sign-off. Uh, so Jasper Gold uh, CDC app uh, is a holistic solution that uh, does all of that with a comprehensive structural checks. Functional CDC and RTC verification, validating your constraints, validating your waivers, uh, doing protocol verification, but also that metastability aware verification that is providing the link between the analysis and your verification environment. A uh, couple of customer success stories on that. Um, we jointly did a uh, workshop at the last DAC with Texas Instruments and ARM presented at the last uh, Jasper user group on uh, CDC and RDC verification. And then finally, the best presentation from, uh, from Jasper user group in uh, a, uh, last year, um, Intel uh, was using sequential equivalence checking for, um, uh, for the clock gating example. And um, they were able to converge uh, on uh, their designs to a great degree. Uh, they found that there was um, less than 3% of the flops. They could not um, confirm equivalent functionality. So they backed off the clock aiding on just that 3% of flops. So they got 97% 90, of the clock saving, 100% of the verification. Okay. Um, so that really concludes uh, the presentation. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and please enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.